rather than the city of striking modern architecture. While all of the buildings are quite impressive, the most innovative and creative of all might be the cube houses, tilted 45 degrees in their playful yellow color. These cubicle structures look unlike anything you'll find elsewhere in the world, and you can actually go inside them and even stay overnight. In this video, I'm gonna share what it's like to stay in one of the most unique houses in the Netherlands. Let's get started! Rotterdam is one of the largest ports in the world, and is the second largest city in the Netherlands. The city is famous for its post-war architecture, mostly because the World War II bombing in 1940 destroyed much of the city. However, the city wasn't just rebuilt and left as that. It is still constantly changing, expanding, and reinventing itself. In particular, the cube houses in Rotterdam are some of the city's most iconic attractions. Designed by Dutch architect Piet Blum, this residential development stands apart as its homes are literally cubes, tilted at a 45 degree angle. During my first visit to the Netherlands, seeing the cube houses was one of those experiences that was at the top of my list. I was doing some research about them and learned about Stay OK Hostel. It's a worldwide chain of hostels, and the one in Rotterdam allows you to actually sleep in a mega cube. Of course, I immediately booked the bed when I found out. The entrance is in the lovely sheltered area between the cube houses. On the first floor, there's a reception, a common space, and a restaurant where you can have a complimentary breakfast during your stay. There are some angled walls and the ceiling is tilted, but it's not like you will lose your balance completely just by being here. However, when you go up to a room, it's easier to clearly see the unique cubic structure from the inside, because all the walls are slanted. Alright, so this is the room where I'm staying tonight. I booked a dormitory room with 7 beds for 40 euros per night. None of the walls are straight, and each room is unique. Besides its distinctive structure, the room is simple, quiet, and clean. You know, when I saw the building from outside, I thought, how is it possible for someone to live in this? But as you can see, the floor is flat and the only ceiling has a kind of unique angle, which I think is nice. So I think this place is quite comfortable to stay in. The only thing I didn't like about the room was that it was very bright due to the missing curtains. I understand that it must be hard to put curtains over the roof windows, but the morning sunlight woke me up pretty early the next day. The architect Piet Blum designed Rotterdam's cube houses in the late 70s at the request of the city's planners. Blum had previously experimented with cubic architecture in the Dutch city of Helmand. So when he was offered this project in the outhaven areas of the city, he decided to expand upon his original ideas. Nowadays, people actually live in the cube houses, and one of the owners has decided to make his house a tourist attraction, Showcube Museum. This place gives visitors a chance to take a tour around the fully furnished cube house. It 
also highlights some of the everyday challenges that residents face, such as buying and fitting furniture for a structure without any straight walls. The cube houses are centrally located in the city, so it's easy to access other tourist attractions such as Markta Rotterdam. Markta Rotterdam is a huge indoor market that's only a few minutes away from the cube houses on foot. Being full of fresh fish, meat, vegetable stalls, and delicatessens, this market is the ideal place for real foodies wanting to spend a day in good taste. I really enjoyed the Kinderdijk, which is a UNESCO recognized village full of windmills. Honestly, it is one of the most magical places in the Netherlands, and you should definitely come here if you visit this country. You can go to Kinderdijk by ferry from Rotterdam in around 30 minutes. This is exactly what I was thinking the Netherlands looked like. The windmills were built in the 600s to drain the alabaster water powders, which had suffered from flooding since the 13th century. Unfortunately, one of the most infamous floods in the Netherlands ruined some of these systems in 1421. Saint Elizabeth's flood drastically changed the shape of the Netherlands into what it is today. It's said that Kinderdijk, Dutch for Children's Dyke, is named after one of the children who was found after the flood in the area. Nowadays, the windmills have been relieved by more efficient screw pumps, but you can still visit the monumental 17th century windmills that have become the iconic landmarks of Kinderdijk. This is what I experienced at the cube houses and other attractions in and around Rotterdam. If you enjoyed the video, please thumbs up and leave a comment. And if you want to see more travel videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.